Hello, Servus Wien. Willkommen. That's the extent of my German. Um, thank you so much for joining us here um, today. We're so excited to be here in Vienna. Um, and finally, I think the sun's finally come out after those horrible rains from the last couple of days, which is very exciting. Um, so welcome to Dude, Where's My Error? Before we get started, allow us to introduce ourselves. My name is Adriana Vilela, and I am a CNCF ambassador, HashiCorp ambassador, blogger, and podcaster. I do have a day job. Um, I work as a senior staff developer advocate in the observability space, focusing most of my time in open telemetry, um, where I actually work with Reese on a regular basis uh, as one of the maintainers as uh, of the hotel and user SIG. And by night, I climb rocks for funsies, or actually early in the morning, I went to one of the local bouldering gyms, which is awesome. Um, I also love capivadas um, because they make me happy, honestly. Oh, hello, I'm Reese. Oh, hello, people. Yes, please keep coming in. There's like seats in the front as well, so you can get comfortable. We're excited that you're excited about our topic. I know. Um, so my name is Reese. Um, I just have the one job. I'm a senior developer relations engineer at New Relic. Um, I work a lot with Adriana, as she mentioned, in the open telemetry community. We both maintain the end user SIG, where we're focused on creating enablement content for end users and connecting end users and contributors and helping facilitate like a, a feedback loop to help improve the project and drive adoption. Um, and by night, I like to train jujitsu. So that's what I'm into and gardening. Um, and yeah, I guess we can get started. All right. Well. So the credit for this talk goes to Austin Parker. Um, some of you might know him if you're familiar with the Open Telemetry community. They are the community manager for Open Telemetry. But a while back, they posted something on LinkedIn, which was a Today I Learned type style post about how Open Telemetry records errors. And we've actually um, shared the link at the end of the slide deck, so you can check it out as well. But it got us wondering. Dude, where's my error? Where's your error, dude? But seriously, though, how does open telemetry handle errors? And what options do you have for recording errors when you instrument a service with open telemetry? This is what we're going to answer for you today in this session. So we'll start off with some quick background to set the stage. Um, just to get a quick show of hands, how many people here have implemented open telemetry to some degree? Right on. Nice, nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we'll start from there, um, just so everyone is, um, has some kind of foundation. And then we'll talk about how errors are represented and handled in open telemetry. Then we'll take you through a little demo to show you um, how open telemetry error, how the same error instrumented by open telemetry instrumentation can look different in different observ observability backends and talk a little bit about why that matters. And finally, we will do a wrap up and maybe some time for questions. We'll see. Okay, well, it's time for some background info. So um, it might be interesting to note the fact that um, when it comes to error handling, error reporting, different languages do it differently. So for example, Go doesn't have a concept of exceptions, whereas languages like Java and Python have very well-defined means for capturing and throwing exceptions. So what is one to do when we're dealing with an application that's written, it's a multi-microservice application written in different languages? Um, what happens when we need to capture telemetry from, this, from these microservices? Um, what happens when we need to do error reporting in a consistent and unified way? And you might have guessed from the talk of the, uh, the title topic, topic of the talk that perhaps open telemetry comes to the rescue. Now, um, I'm not going to spend too long on open telemetry since most folks are familiar with it, leaving this slide here for reference really quickly. Um, what I do want to talk about, though, is um, really the difference between errors and exceptions. Um, because like all things, everyone has their favorite definition for things, multiple definitions, favorite definitions. Um, we will impose our definition upon you um, for level setting purposes. Um, please note that these definitions are in line with um, the 
uh, accepted definitions of uh, errors and exceptions. They're not necessarily lined up with the open telemetry definition, but it's not going to break anything, I assure you. So what is an error? So an error is an unexpected issue in a program that hinders execution. And that can be something as simple as a syntax error, missing a semicolon, or perhaps misspelling a keyword. Or uh, we can have uh, a different type of error, like a runtime error, which can be like a logic error. And then we have exceptions. So an exception is a type of runtime error that disrupts the normal flow of a program. And that can be something like dividing by zero or referencing an invalid memory address, or perhaps you can't get to your database for some reason. Okay. <laughs> Wrong thing. <laughs> All right, now that we've got our definition sorted out, let's talk about error handling in OpenTelemetry. So as Adriana mentioned just a minute ago, um, languages have their own ideas about what constitutes errors and exceptions, as well as how to handle them. So how exactly does OpenTelemetry deal with all the conceptual differences from language to language? This is where the specification, or spec, comes, for short, comes into play. So the specification provides a blueprint for developers working across all uh, areas of the project. Um, it standardizes implement implementation across all languages. Um, and since language APIs and SDKs are implementations of the spec, it is generally, um, there's rules against implementing anything that isn't covered in the spec. Um, this is to provide a guiding principle for helping organize contributions to the project. In practice, there are some exceptions. <laughs> For example, a language might prototype a new feature as part of adding it to the spec, but the feature may be published um, usually as experimental or alpha before the language, the corresponding language is added to the spec. Another example is when a language might decide to diverge from the spec, and again, generally not advised, but sometimes there are some pretty strong reasons um, that are language specific to do something different. In this way, the spec allows for a degree of flexibility for each language to implement a feature um, as natural to that language as possible. So as Adriana mentioned, uh, most languages have implemented record exception. Well, Go, since it doesn't have the conventional concept of exceptions, has implemented record error, which does the same thing. And we'll talk about this a little bit more later. So now that we have a unified framework, Let's learn about what options OpenTelemetry does provide for us for recording and handling errors. So there's two uh, main ways that we'll talk about, which is through spans and logs. How many people here are familiar with what spans and traces are? Okay, I'm gonna guess it's a little bit more than that for those of you who are a little bit shy. Um, in OpenTelemetry, a span represents an individual um, unit of work within a request. So for example, an HTTP call or um, a database call, and spans are the building blocks of distributed traces. Spans are related to each other and to a trace through something called context. Context is the glue that turns a pack of data a pack of data into a unified trace. Context propagation is the mechanism that allows us to pass information across multiple apps and systems and tie them together into a distributed trace. It's also how we can get metrics and logs associated with our span data, but that is a topic for another talk. We can learn all sorts of things about um, our apps and systems through traces in their context, such as how a user might be navigating our apps or where bottlenecks might be occurring. Okay, we're gonna talk about spans for a little bit longer. Uh, we're gonna talk about the ways OpenTelemetry enhances spans. So one of the ways is through metadata in the form of key value, at, uh, key value pairs, otherwise known as attributes, which is also um, the context that we were just talking about. So some attributes are collected by default, such as span ID, um, trace ID, but you can also add your own custom attributes. And attaching relevant information to your spans, um, such as user ID or request parameter, or literally anything that makes sense for your business needs, allows you to gain deeper insights into the circumstances surrounding an error um, and identify its root cause or 
just gives you more information about something that occurred at a given time. Spans also have a span kind field, which helps inform developers um, about where that span generated. And span kind is determined automatically by the instrumentation libraries that you use. And there are several span kinds that are defined in OpenTelemetry. Each of them has unique implications for error reporting. First, we have client, which represents outgoing synchronous remote calls, so such as outgoing HTTP requests or um, a database call. Server, which represents incoming synchronous remote calls. Internal, which represents operations that do not cross boundary, uh, process boundaries. And then we also have producer and steamer span kind, uh, which typically represent uh, message queue jobs. OpenSolumG further enhances spans with span status, um, as well as a description of that status, for example, a message about the error. By default, a span status is marked as unset, unless otherwise specified. You can also mark a span status as error if um, that's what it should be, or okay if the resulting span is error-free. Finally, you can enhance spans with span events. A span event is uh, essentially a log message that is embedded within the span on which it occurred. Span events help enhance spans by providing descriptive information. And you can also capture additional information by adding uh, additional attributes onto the span event. When a span status is set to error, a span event is created that captures the span's error message in stack trace. And again, if you add additional um, attributes to it, it will be captured here as well. So earlier we talked about record exception. And since Go doesn't support the conventional notion of exceptions, it supports instead record error, which does the same thing idiomatically. You have to make an additional call to set the span status to error, as it won't be set to that automatically. Similarly, record exception can be used to record span events um, without setting the span status to error, which means you can use it to record additional data about a span. The decoupling that OpenTelemetry does um, from the span status being automatically set to error when a span exception occurs supports the use case where you can have an exception event with a status of OK or unset. And this gives um, instrumentation authors as well as end users a high degree of flexibility with what they want to do with their data or your data. So in addition to capturing errors on spans, you can also use logs um, thanks to the somewhat recent, I guess it's been a while now, of stabilization of logs in the OTEL spec. So in OpenTelemetry, a log is a structured message emitted by a service or other component. Um, they include a message, a timestamp, as well as a severity text. So severity levels for logs represent the type of message that is being emitted. So kind of classic um, debug, info, warning, error, critical. And as we mentioned earlier, trace context propagation is what allows you to correlate your logs to your span data within a trace. If you spot a log level with a level of uh, error or critical, you can navigate to the correlated trace using the associated trace ID to find out more information about what occurred. And if, you if your backend supports it, you can also do it the other way, navigate to the associated log from the trace. So to record an error on a log, either exception.type or exception.message is required, whereas exception.stacktrace is recommended. So should you record errors on spans or logs? The answer, of course, is it depends. Um, obviously, everyone, every team is going to have their own opinions about uh, signals. And um, so it really just depends on what works best for your team and your business needs. Um, spans can be great for capturing errors uh, because if an operation errors out, marking a span that, um, as having an error could make it you know, stand out and therefore easier to spot. But if you're not filtering or tail sampling and your system is producing thousands of spans per minute, it could make intermittent errors a little bit harder to spot. Um, something else to consider is your observability backend. Um, do they render both logs and traces? Does it matter to you? 
how easily queryable or discoverable are your logs, spans, span events, et cetera. And is logs and trace correlation even supported? I think the answer nowadays is most likely, but still something to consider. And if you've been using, oops, well, if you've been using a proprietary agent to monitor your applications and are in the process of migrating or you have migrated to OpenTelemetry, you might notice that an error that's uh, captured by OpenTelemetry instrumentation might not be expressed the same way um, that you might expect as compared to the same error captured by the proprietary agent's instrumentation. This is most likely due to the fact that OpenTelemetry simply models errors differently than how vendors have been doing. Uh, for example, vendors have their own notion of what constitutes a request in an application. You've probably heard the term transaction, which can mean something slightly different from vendor to vendor. In OpenTelemetry, a request is represented by a trace, which is made up of spans. So backends have had to adjust how they populate their uh, platform features, which is uh, with a fairly different data model. Additionally, OpenTelemetry span kind might impact whether a specific error um, spanner is counted toward the overall application error rate uh, because the vendor might have an opinion that only server and consumer span errors should count toward the application rate, um, the overall application error rate. And we're actually going to take a look at that in just a second. Um, Adrian's going to run a demo and show you the same error captured by OpenTelemetry instrumentation, um, how it's rendered in a few different backends, starting with Jaeger. And Jaeger expresses spans, span events as logs um, because that's essentially what they are. But some backends might have created a new, uh, their own sig data signal type for a span event, um, which would impact how you query them and how they are visualized in the backend. Okay, it's demo time. So enough with all the theory talk. Let's see this thing actually in practice. So we have a simple sample app that we're going to demonstrate. It is a Python app. It consists of a client and a server. Um, the client makes a call to a roll dice endpoint. And this thing, and so it's, a, uh, it's written in Flask, this endpoint. And basically all it does is it rolls a virtual die, um, picks a number, a random number between one and six, and spits it out to standard out. Now, what's gonna happen is we're going to, uh, we've instrumented this application um, using traces both using auto instrumentation and manual instrumentation. And for funsies, we've also added some metrics and some logs. Um, we are sending all of that instrumentation to an open telemetry collector, which then forwards it off to uh, multiple observability backends. So as we said, we're sending some stuff off to Jaeger, we're sending some stuff off to ServiceNow Cloud Observability and also to New Relic so that you can see how the same data end up being rendered differently in different observability backends. Okay, so let us look at our sample code. So this is our server.py. I'm not gonna show client.py because honestly, there isn't anything interesting going on. This is where all the cool stuff happens. So we have our roll dice endpoint. And this, uh, all this does really is it calls our do roll function. And do roll does the actual work. It generates a random number between one and six. And then the section down here basically initializes things. It initializes Flask. It initializes our hotel traces and our hotel metrics. So with that in mind, uh, let's dig a little bit deeper. Um, inside do roll, we create a span manually. Now we're going to do a few things with our span. We want to capture um, our die roll value. So we've created a span attribute to do that. And for fun, we've also decided to add a span event, which contains a message by default. Um, and we've also added a couple of attributes. In addition to that, um, I've added a log message and it's just log info level. And because that log is embedded within the span definition in Python, it gets automatically correlated to the span and its parent trace, which is very awesome. And then finally, we have our um, metrics instrument. So this is a counter instrument and it gets incremented by one every time this function is called. Now this is a demo about errors. So we need to force an error somewhere. Rolling a die doesn't exactly um, scream, ooh, errors. So we're forcing an error by basically every time we roll a number divisible by two, we throw an exception 
And then that exception is caught in our roll dice uh, function. And within there, I've decided, okay, well, let's, every time we catch this exception, let's create a new span. And on top of that, let's record it as an exception. And let's also add a log message with the log level error. Okay, so this is our app in a nutshell. Let's see it in practice. Um, I'm gonna warn you, um, I do not like live demos. I feel like that's just, I, I do, I'm not a glutton for punishment. So I'll do the next best thing. I will uh, live narrate the pre-recorded demo. So um, the source code for, uh, for this example is available on GitHub and we do provide links to, uh, to the GitHub repo on here. Um, I also wanted to note that um, we spin this up using GitHub code spaces because again, setting up environments sucks. So, you know, we want you to actually like try out this demo and have fun with it and not, you know, pull your hair out and, and curse our names uh, while trying to run it. So here we go. So we start by opening this up in GitHub code spaces. Here we go. And um, while it initializes, there's one thing that we're going to do right away. Um, there is a, an OTEL collector config file called OTEL call config extras. So you can specify additional configurations there. And I'm putting that in there because it's got some configuration data for sending uh, data to ServiceNow Cloud Observability. And it's got some API keys, which I don't want in Git. So it's Git ignored, so I'm manually adding it there. Now we're building our Python client and server uh, Docker files. Um, we're going to run the whole thing using Docker Compose. So it's building. Little hamster is doing its thing. Here we go. Wish I had the Jeopardy music. Okay, now we're going to do a Docker Compose up. So this is going to run the Python client, server, Jaeger, and Otel collector. Um, so we can see here, um, it's sending stuff to the hotel collector, which is good news. It means that our backends should hopefully receive the data. We're going to pop over to Jaeger. We go to the ports tab in code spaces and click on the little globe. And that's going to open up Jaeger on our web browser, which we'll see in a second. And we select our server service and we should see some traces. So we see some big red dots and some little green dots. The big red dots represent uh, uh, traces with spans that have errors and the green dots represent traces that have no, no error spans. So this is one of the green dots and we see our do role and it shows our span event with the attributes. Um, as reset, it shows up as logs. This is actually just a span event that's Jaeger speak. Um, next, we're going to click on a red dot. And lo and behold, this one has an error, so it shows up red. We see our span event, but we also see another span event with our stack trace because it uh, threw an error. So this is new. In addition, we have a new span that was created. Remember, because we caught that exception, we created a new span. So we see that here. And once we expand, we should see also an, uh, an error, uh, span error with the stack trace um, over here. So now we're going to see what this looks like in ServiceNow Cloud Observability. Um, so we open it up, we see these red triangles and we see also these green dots. So red triangles, traces that have errors, green dots, traces do not have errors. So let's click on one of our green dots to see what it looks like. And again, do roll shows up and we see over here our span event. And we also see this new thing, this log event, because ServiceNow Cloud Observability supports uh, logs, whereas Jaeger does not. So if we click on here, it should open up our log in a second. Magic. And there it is, and it's got a trace ID. So if we click on see in context, you can see, hey, there's another log message with the same trace ID. So these two logs are part of the same trace. The other log is from our, uh, our client app. Next, we're going to click on our triangle, and we can see our uh, span aired out. And we see, again, our um, span events, the, the regular one plus the one with the exception that was thrown with the stack trace. And then, again, we see our same log message, same as before. And you might notice that there are three log messages now with the same uh, trace ID, which we'll see in a sec. Again, we have our, um, our span that was created when we caught the exception. Um, it shows the stack trace as expected. 
And we're going to see, again, we're gonna click on that log message to see what is up with it. Now, remember when we created that log message, we said it was an error type, right? Um, so we should see something special here, hopefully. Oh, it's red. Um, so we know that it's, it's an error log. And so we see three log messages um, correlated to the same trace. So now we have that lovely correlation. And now I'm going to pass on to Reese so that she can show us what it looks like in New Relic. Um, by the way, this is um, meant to be vendor neutral. <laughs> so we're not pitching either of our no, we are not. <laughs> this is literally just to show examples of how the same error captured by the same instrumentation can be expressed um, in different backends the backends we have access to easily, so. Okay, so I don't have as uh, great of a narration as Adrian is gonna have, but so here we've clicked into send request trace uh, group, and we are gonna click on, oh, first we're gonna toggle the errors, cause then you can uh, sort by, oh, oops. So you can sort by all the traces that have errors, and let's go ahead and click on one to look at it, and, Oh, uh, yeah, so you can automatically navigate to the error in this case, and it'll pop up with error details. And let's take a look at what that includes. Um, we can see a span event exception was uh, recorded. You can also look at the different attributes. Um, so for example, this one came from PyOtel server. Um, we can see, oh, true, this is an error, and the name of the span, etc. And again, you can see the status code description that we, um, uh, a custom description that we provided, and some other details. Um, so if we go back to here, we can click on span events. Um, and in this case, you can see the normal span event um, that we decided to record, as well as the exception, along with the exception stack trace and some other info. And you can see at the bottom, trace ID was captured. And I believe next, I'm gonna go to the logs. And here uh, we see all three logs that were associated with this uh, entire trace. Um, again, you can see the service that this particular uh-oh log message was captured. Um, and you can see different attributes. So log level severity text, and then, yes. So now we're going to go to PyOtel server. Thank God, okay. So these are, these are all the logs that were uh, generated by uh, PyOtel server entity. And let's click into one of the exception logs or the error logs. And you can kind of see uh, you know, the same information. This is gonna be a different, um, associate with a different trace because I wasn't specifically looking for the same one. But you can go from, um, as we mentioned earlier, like depending on what's important to you for your observably backend, um, being able to like navigate between um, your correlated signals uh, might be important, so that's something to consider. Um, or if you just want traces, Jaeger might be fantastic for you. And there you have it. Um, so in summary, error handling is challenging, um, especially when you have multiple services written in different languages. Um, Open Telemetry provides a blueprint for um, how they should be handled. Uh, but also allows for a degree of flexibility uh, for languages, um, instrumentation authors to implement features as idiomatically as possible. OpenTelemetry also gives you the option of recording errors either on spans or logs, or both, depending on what works for you um, and your use case, as well as enabling you to correlate different signals to give you a holistic view of the issue. You can also enhance spans uh, through different ways, uh, metadata, um, such as custom attributes um, and span status. And finally, how your open telemetry data is expressed in your backend can be different from what you expect, especially if you've previously used that backend's proprietary instrumentation, 
since OpenTelemetry does model errors differently than how vendors typically have done in the past. Oh. And uh, a bit before I, I mention this, I, I do want to just reiterate the fact that, you know, the cool thing about the vendor neutrality aspect of OpenTelemetry is you can actually configure a single collector to send the same data to all three observability backends, or more if you want. So if you're actually obser uh, evaluating observability backends, this is a great opportunity to see, okay, which one does it for me, right? Because at the end of the day, it's the same data. It's a matter of like, what do they do with my data in a way that is meaningful to me? So I just wanted to mention that. Hooray for open telemetry for being vendor neutral. Um, I did want to mention also that, um, you know, Reese and I are not artists, but we are great prompt engineers and we had so much fun creating the AI images for this deck. So all hail our evil AI overlord. Um, being AI powered by Dolly 3, please spare us when Skynet comes. Thank you. Um, I also want to uh, do some shameless self-promotion. I mentioned I have a podcast. Um, my daughter designed the graphics, and she helps me edit the episodes. And I've had some cool guests on, um, including Kelsey Hightower, Charity Majors, Liz Fong Jones, Hazel Weekly, and Reese. Reese was actually my second guest. So all the more reason to go check it out. Um, also, as promised, we do have the links for the various resources that we mentioned today. So... We've got the GitHub repo with the code example that you can try out for yourself. And it includes a video, um, the video clip that, uh, that I showed earlier. Um, it's there um, with my narration. Um, and, uh, and you can, like I said, you can open GitHub code spaces. This is the link to the uh, uh, post that Reese mentioned from Austin Parker that inspired this talk. Um, there is a blog version, blog post version of this talk on the OTEL blog and also um, a link to the uh, OTEL spec compliance matrix. So, Oh, one thing um, that I, we didn't explicitly call out, but um, why observability backends matter in this case is because OpenTelemetry is focused on the instrumentation part. Um, they do not provide a data storage um, or visualization backend. So you still have to send your data somewhere so that you can query it, visualize it, uh, build dashboards, etc. Alerts, so on. All right, that's it. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate your time. And uh, if we have questions, if we have time for questions, we're happy to take them. Or you guys could go enjoy an early lunch, whichever. We'll, we'll be here. Yes, that's true. We don't want to keep you from food. <laughs> and we finally have nice weather, too. So I'm so excited to not be pelted by rain yeah. and wind. Oh. <laughs>